Does crystal healing really work? I'm going to break this arguably controversial video down into five manageable sections. So by the end of this video, if you stick around until the end, you should have a firm grasp of exactly what crystal healing is and allegedly does, the science, the placebo effect, some underlying ethical concerns, and the meaningful takeaway when you put all of those things together. I can probably keep this section fairly short and sweet because most of you will have a, at least a baseline understanding of what crystal healing is, but for those of you who don't, crystal healing is essentially a practice that claims certain crystals possess healing properties, influencing physical, mental or spiritual well-being. Advocates of this believe in the unique energies and vibrations these crystals emit, which are said to interact positively with the human body. We've believed it on one level or another for literally thousands of years, and these beliefs have stretched at intervals through various different civilizations, which I won't delve too far into because we literally have a library that explains this in some detail, civilization by civilization. In Western Europe specifically, crystal healing survived the collapse of the Roman Empire, endured throughout the medieval period right up until the 1700s when the Enlightenment famously supplanted cultural and pagan beliefs for which crystal healing is largely rooted with science. Crystal healing then largely disappeared for a series of centuries until it underwent a curious resurgence during the hippie movement in the 1960s. Since then, crystal healing in various different forms and facets has exploded into a very prosperous industry. Obviously, it's very difficult to put an exact dollar value on how much that industry is worth. But if you look at the estimates for the global alternative and complementary medicine market, which includes practices like crystal healing, estimates range from several billion dollars a year to 80 billion dollars a year. But what has science got to say about all this? Well, specific inquiry into crystal healing has been characterised by a notable scarcity of compelling evidence supporting its purported therapeutic benefits. Perhaps the most noteworthy studies are going to be things like the Mitchell Hyde experiment in 1985, the double-blind quartz crystal study from 1998, and also meta-analysis on crystal healing trials conducted in 2010. The first and perhaps most significant of these three studies was the Mitchell Hyde experiment, which aimed to investigate the alleged energy transfer from crystals to the human body. Participants were exposed to crystals with the underlying expectation that their energy fields would positively impact the participants' well-being. However, the study found no statistically significant difference in the well-being measures between the group exposed to crystals and the control group who were not, leading the researchers to question the claimed therapeutic effects. Then we have the double-blind quartz crystal study from 1998, which is perhaps better known. In a double-blind, placebo-controlled study, researchers essentially investigated whether individuals who were unaware of the presence of quartz crystals experienced any therapeutic effects. Participants were also exposed to either real quartz crystals or convincingly crafted placebos. Surprisingly, the study revealed that both groups reported similar perceived improvements overwhelmingly suggesting a potential role of psychological factors rather than the actual properties of the crystals themselves. Then, finally, a comprehensive meta-analysis conducted in 2010 sought to synthesise findings from multiple crystal healing trials. Analyzing data from various studies accumulated over the years, this meta-analysis indicated a lack of consistent and robust evidence supporting the therapeutic efficacy of crystal healing. It also called into question the methodology and the conclusions that had been sought from previous studies that had resulted in positive outcomes, meaning that many of the studies that crystal healers had drawn upon to support their conclusions were deeply flawed. I will, of course, provide all of the references for these studies in the bio so that you can check yourself and don't have to take my word for it. 
But one of the interesting things that we can compile by looking at these studies is the impact of the placebo effect. But what exactly is the placebo effect and why is it so important in the context of crystal healing? Well, the placebo effect is basically a powerful psychological phenomenon which plays a significant role in crystal healing experiences, as well as various different alternative therapies. People may feel real improvements due to an underlying belief in those crystals' abilities, even when the actual healing properties of those crystals are scientifically unverified. For example, let's take a hypothetical candidate and call her Barbara. Now, Barbara is feeling a little bit under the weather and has been told by her doctor that some medicine is going to make her feel better. Now, unbeknownst to Barbara, this medicine is actually just some sugar pills. But if there is an underlying trust between Barbara and her doctor, it stands to reason that the placebo effect will kick in and it will have a positive effect on her symptoms, largely because that trust will lower her heart rate, which will lower her blood pressure, which will have a positive underlying effect on her physiology, aka her symptoms. Which is exactly where ethical concerns start to come into play within the industry, and where the industry should be subject to some degree of public scrutiny, largely because what we do understand about the placebo effect is that it is a temporary phenomenon. In the medium to long term, it's not going to legitimately help people. It is anchored in belief. That belief is generally anchored in trust. Trust of the person who told it to you. Trust in the person who sold it to you. It's important for the general public to understand the placebo effect, or at least understand the distinctions between genuine treatment and the placebo effect, because it is this lack of understanding within the public lexicon that allows people with a profit motive to slip into the cracks. Some practitioners might exploit vulnerable individuals, making unsubstantiated claims about the healing powers of their inventory. Consumers might invest time and money without receiving any proven benefits, raising ethical questions about the practice more broadly. It also might delay them from seeking genuine help, which could actually have a very negative effect on their underlying condition. When we see people marketing crystals for conditions like cancer or diabetes, this, for example, is unacceptable. It represents an abuse of trust and is indicative of an industry that has been allowed to get out of control. In conclusion, are all crystal healers therefore crooks? Absolutely not. Most will authentically believe the things that they say. Most will also authentically believe that the things that they offer do legitimately help. And in the short term, many of them actually will. And it must be understood that many people have short-term problems that require a short-term degree of catharsis or relief. In many situations, crystal healing, as an extension of the placebo effect, can actually offer this. The ethical concerns arise in the medium to long term when crystals are marketed as being legitimate medicinal solutions to authentic and, in many situations, existential problems. Remember, if you believe something and you hold it dear and it gives you some degree of catharsis and relief from reality, then great. This is a luxury that is afforded to you in a free society. It needs to be appreciated and respected and protected. However, there is a fundamental distinction between believing something and somebody profiting from telling you what to believe. Understand the distinction and approach these people with a degree of healthy scepticism. They are not all criminals, but there is a small subsection of these people who only say the things that they do in order to profit. And they do this because of the wiggle room that the placebo effect permits them. So does crystal healing really work? In the short term, yes it can. But understand that this is subject to some caveats.